Hey guys, this is Heyman from Edureka. Today's session is going to be on sentiment analysis. So without making any further ado, let's move on to today's agenda to understand what all will be covered in today's session. So we'll start off our session by discussing what is machine learning, right? And then we'll see where does sentiment analysis fit into machine learning. Once we're done with that, we'll move on to the part where we'll be discussing why sentiment analysis actually came into the picture. And after that, we'll be discussing what sentiment analysis actually is, all right? After that, we'll move on to the part where we'll be seeing how sentiment analysis algorithm actually works. And in the next part, we'll be doing a small demo, all right? So we'll be doing an El Clasico comparison between Real Madrid and Barcelona. So for all the football lovers out there, it, it is going to be an awesome demonstration wherein we'll be deciding a winner as in which team or which club has more positive tweets. Towards the end, we'll also be discussing a use case for sentiment analysis. So guys, this is our agenda for today. Are we clear with it? All right, I'm getting confirmations. So Dinesh is saying he's clear. So does Saurabh. All right, guys. So uh, I see most of you guys have given me a confirmation. Okay, so let's move ahead then. So let's move on to the first topic of today's discussion, which is what is machine learning? So machine learning is basically a way of providing the computers to learn explicitly without the intervention of the human, right? They, so that they can learn themselves. So basically we're trying to develop programs in machine learning which can change themselves whenever they encounter new kind of data without the human intervening or without the help of the human, they can change the code themselves, right? So this is what machine learning is all about. Going ahead, machine learning actually is divided into three subcategories. We have supervised learning, we have reinforcement learning, and then we have the unsupervised learning. Now let's talk about the first subcategory, which is the supervised learning. So what is supervised learning? So supervised learning is basically when you're training your program with already existing outputs. In the sense, you're training your program with data sets so that it recognizes what we are actually talking about. For example, if I want my program to recognize how to differentiate between different fruits, I actually have to train my program with different kind of inputs as in I have to train my program what are the attributes of say an apple or what are the attributes of say a banana, right? And once I train my model or once I train my program, then there is one more data set which is called the testing data set in the sense. So we have trained a program, all right? So we have given them the inputs, my, I've given them my program the inputs of some fruits, not all fruits, but some fruits and this is how you make differences or this is how you differentiate between two fruits. For example, if I differentiate between a banana and apple, so I'll say an apple is actually round and a banana is kind of long, all right? So now I want to check whether my program is actually making the correct decisions. Or is it making the correct predictions? So what I'll do is I'll pass a testing data set, right? Now for the testing data set as well, I have the outputs, but what I'll be doing is I'll be actually verifying the outputs. Right. So say I pass an image for a lemon and if it says the lemon is an apple that becomes wrong. Right. So it made a wrong prediction. So it actually decreases the accuracy of the program. Now, so this is the concept of the training and the testing data set. Now, why did I explain you that is because in supervised learning, we are actually providing the training data set to the program. Right. So whenever there's a training data set involved in a program, it is called supervised learning. Comparing it to unsupervised learning, so unsupervised learning basically means that there is no testing or training data set involved, right? So you don't give any data set to your program. It actually just starts making prediction itself. Now, how does it do that? It actually makes classifications based on clustering, based on logic, all right? Actually, there is no contact with the real world or there is no training of the program as in what is a fruit, or how does it look? The program knows nothing. It is just pure logic. It goes according to clustering and then it classifies a fruit as in it will be an apple or it will be something else. Now, how does it do the clustering? It's something that is a little more complex, but don't worry guys, we'll be discussing what unsupervised learning is in our next session. So don't sweat if you don't understand what I just told you, because if you start telling you guys about clustering, it'll actually take up a lot of time, right? So just check the unsupervised learning part for now, if you don't understand it. The third type of learning is actually the reinforcement learning. 
Now, what is reinforcement learning? So the reinforcement learning is basically when you're trying to make decisions, when your program tries to make decision based on your past experience. So basically, uh, learning is based on behavioral patterns of humans because if we guys, we humans, we take decisions, we actually take it based on our experience, right? Based on our past experiences. And that is what this program does. Let me give you guys an example. For example, if I ask my program, will it rain tomorrow, right? So how will it predict will it rain tomorrow is like this. So it will go back and check when did it rain, right? And it will go back to the previous day and analyze what were the parameters that led to a rain on the next day, all right? And those parameters will be checked with today as in I'm asking whether it will rain tomorrow, right? So it will check the parameters with today's day and if those parameters are actually matching, it might give me a decision as in whether it will rain tomorrow or not. Right, so this is the way it happens. This is the logic it follows. It goes back into the past, picks up the data, analyzes it and compares it with the present and then comes up with the decision. And this is what reinforcement learning is all about. Now, we are going to learn about sentiment analysis today, which is actually a part of supervised learning. All right, so now, like I told you guys, so there'll be a training data set. All right, so we'll be training our data and that data uh, we'll be evaluating. So this is what we'll be doing today. All right, guys. Now we know there is something called sentiment analysis in machine learning. But what is sentiment analysis exactly? Now before that, before understanding the what of sentiment analysis, let's understand why do we need sentiment analysis exactly, right? So why do we need sentiment analysis is because of this. So let's take an example here. Say you have an application and it's very famous that like that you have a million or a billion user base lucky you all right now you want to add a functionality to your application now whenever you add a function whenever anyone adds a functionality to any kind of application what basically happens is you get positive and as well as negative remarks as well on that functionality all right now you have to make a balance so if your negative remarks are more than your positive remarks so it actually becomes a bad function it actually becomes a bad update right so and if your positive remarks are more than your negative remarks it becomes a good update right but how will you decide which comment or which reaction is positive or negative all right so that is why we have sentiment analysis so basically what you'll do is uh, you'll have a comment and uh, you will analyze it and you'll decide whether it's a positive comment, it's a sad comment or it's an angry comment or if you talk logically or if you talk in terms of sentiment analysis, there are basically three kinds of emotions that we get out of a sentence. So it is basically a positive comment, it's a negative comment or it's a neutral comment, right? So this is what we decide. Now uh, this is why we use sentiment analysis. Now, what is sentiment analysis exactly? Let's shed a light on that. So sentiment analysis is basically identifying and categorizing opinions expressed in a piece of text by a customer, right? So your customer, he might tweet, he might do Facebook, he might put the comment on Google Play Store, anywhere, guys. So wherever that comment is, you have to actually be able to analyze it. And like I said, you have a million and a billion user group and it becomes very difficult for you to actually go through every comment and decide whether it's a positive comment or a negative comment. Having said that, so that is why we use sentiment analysis and sentiment analysis is basically identifying and categorizing the comments as positive or negative or neutral based on computational programs. All right. Now you might be wondering why do we have these images, right? So these images are actually from Facebook if any of you guys would have recognized this. So uh, for those of you who still didn't get it, so guys, whenever you like a post on Facebook, you actually get these emote icons, all right? So if you think closely about it, you are actually using sentiment analysis every day on Facebook because these are actually sentiments, right? So if you look at the first image, it's a thumbs up. So that means it's a like image. If you see at the second image, it's a love icon. So you love that post. Then you have an LOL post that you're laughing on that post. Then you have a surprise emote icon. Then you have a sad emote icon. And then in the last you have an angry emote icon as well. All right. So basically um, Facebook has made their own work easier. They've made a smart move here because they've already categorized your emotions. You are doing their work. They don't have to do the analysis on whatever comment you're putting or on your like. 
they have put in emote icons and you have made their job easier by just putting in what are you feeling on the post all right so they are basically doing sentiment analysis but in a very cool way that they're not analyzing actually anything they have already put in the emote icons and they're just basically categorizing based on the emote icon that you put all right so this is what sentiment analysis is guys moving ahead um, now we have understood what sentiment analysis is why do we use it but how does it work so you might be thinking it's a very complex thing but it's actually pretty simple in the next five minutes you'll be thinking okay it was a cakewalk for you all right so basically you have two kind of uh, words when you are doing sentiment analysis you have a list of words which are positive and you have a list of words which are negative right there, there's also a third kind of words which are called the neutral words or the stock words so neutral words are different, stop words are different, but in our discussion today, we are actually counting them in because we are just getting an outline of what sentiment analysis is, right? So uh, basically you have two kind of words. You have positive words and you have negative words and the words which are not in both of these lists are actually the neutral words, all right? So these positive and negative words are your database. So whenever there's a statement involved in analyzing, this statement is matched against both these files or both these data sets, that is the positive words and the negative words. And then we decide whether the statement is positive or negative. How do we do that? Let's see. So basically you pass a sample statement, all right? And that sample statement is matched against the positive words and the negative words. That sample statement is actually broken down into words, all right? Now each and every word in that statement is then matched against the positive list of words and the negative list of words. And you then assign a score to each and every word. Now how is the score assigned is something like this. So if the positive word you assign a plus one to the particular word. If that particular word is neutral you assign it as a zero. And if that particular word is a negative word you actually give it a minus one. Now, for those of you who still didn't get it, okay, in the next slide, you might understand everything. So what we just discussed is what I've drawn over here. So basically, this is a sample statement. So the algorithm, what it does is it basically breaks the words, all right? So now we have this as a separate word, is as a separate word, a as a separate word, sample, and then statement, all right? Now, each of these words will be compared against positive words and the negative words. So for example, first this will be taken by the algorithm and it will be checking whether it is there in the positive words. If it's not there in the positive words, it will check whether it's there in the negative words. Now if it doesn't find it, whether it's a positive word or a negative word, it assigns it as a zero. But if it does, if it finds it under the positive words, it assigns it a value of a plus one. If it finds that if it is under the negative word, it assigns it a value as negative one. And towards the end, when all the words are evaluated, it aggregates or it sums all the scores and comes up with the final score. So any score which is above zero makes it a positive sentence and any score which is lesser than zero makes it a negative sentence. So that is how we decide whether a sentence is positive or negative. All right guys, so are we clear until here? As in, do you have any doubts that you have until this slide? We can discuss it all over again. Any part that it didn't get until now, even if it was way before, it is okay. We can do it again. Any part that it didn't understand. Yeah, so if you look at this algorithm, it's actually pretty simple. There's nothing to it. But then if you think about it in complex terms, you actually have a lot of things in sentiment analysis, right? Because you have to increase your accuracy to the maximum. And for doing that, you have to put in a lot more conditions to actually be more accurate. How, what are we talking about? I'll be discussing in a few minutes. But then, yeah, don't be scared. But that part also is pretty simple. Any doubts until here, guys? All right, since most of you are giving me a go, so let's move on to the next section now. So our next section is talks about an example. So we now know how the algorithm works, right? But now, let's take a live statement let's take a sample statement and let's uh, understand what its nature be whether it will be a positive sentence or it will be a negative sentence so let's do that so our first example statement is the iphone 7 is awesome all right ourselves we know that it's a positive comment but how will the computer recognize it let's apply the sentiment algorithm onto it all right so first it will split the sentence into words right each word will be separated and each word will then be evaluated so uh, it will first look whether d is there in 
any of the positive or the negative words oh yeah so the blue ones are the positive words and the red ones are the negative words right so it will compare the with the list of positive words so it's not there and it's a neutral word iPhone 7 it's not there here it's not here it's a neutral word is is not there it's a neutral word awesome is a positive word hence a plus one right our second sentence is a little more complex so the movie is not that great after the interval it was boring all right so not here is a negative word great here is a positive word and boring here is a negative word all right so you might ask me like there's a positive word here why it's not a positive sentence so it is because we have to calculate the overall score and we are looking at the overall score to decide whether our statement is positive or negative right so it's a minus one here plus one here and a minus one here that comes down to be minus one so this statement is negative until now we have discussed our algorithm is actually working fine for these kind of statements now what about the statements which are a little more complex now uh, somebody had a question here about some statement now exactly like that statement guys I have a statement so what if we have a statement just like this so it says the service was terrible but the food was great now how will you evaluate this kind of sentence in the first part of sentence it is actually a negative comment but after the sentence it is actually a positive comment now it depends on the perception if you're a guy who is into good service you might find this whole comment as negative right and if you're a foodie and you're not concerned with the service you are, might actually find this comment positive so it depends on your perception but with computers how will it identify whether it's a positive sentence or it's a negative sentence any idea guys how will you solve this okay don't be scared it's pretty simple so this kind of case is called constructive conjunction all right and the way we solve it is like this so whenever there's a but in the statement so for example in our statement we have the service was terrible but the food was great right so whenever there's a but in the statement we actually split our statement into two sentences for example in this statement we split it into the service was terrible and the second statement is but the food was great now once we do that we are actually going to evaluate each statement separately for example this sentence will be a negative sentence but this sentence will actually be a positive sentence right so both of these scores will be evaluated separately and will be listed separately so instead of one score we are actually getting two scores and instead of one sentence we are actually getting two sentences and that is the reason this method of solving a particular complex sentence is called binary sentiment analysis because you're splitting a sentence into two and then you're evaluating it right so this method is called binary sentiment analysis now like this method we have a lot many more methods which address a lot many more complex uh, statements but yeah you have to incorporate those algorithms into your sentiment analysis algorithm but because if you look at this closely this is actually a condition that if there's a but please do this right but the main idea the main algorithm behind is the sentiment analysis algorithm which we just discussed all right so if you were to increase the accuracy of your model you would do it in this particular way and that is the reason because we cannot predict or we cannot actually say what kind of sentence may come up right because English is such a big language and it becomes very difficult for us to account each and every condition into our algorithm and that is the reason the even the best sentiment analysis algorithm in the world have an accuracy not more than 80 percent right having said that guys any doubts until here anything that you didn't understand we can repeat it again any part that you didn't understand okay so I think we are done here I think you guys so most of you guys are giving me a go okay so let's move ahead then so our next section actually talks about the demonstration part so now we'll be implementing this algorithm in R all right so let's check let's see what is our problem statement for today and it's actually pretty exciting so yeah for all the football lovers out there we have this use case so we'll be doing an L classical comparison between Real Madrid and Barcelona and we are going to decide which one is better <laughs> all right so how we're we going to decide that is based on Twitter so basically what we are going to do is we're going to stream from the Twitter handles of both these clubs the Twitters and we're going to evaluate which club has more positive tweets right so which club has more number of positive tweets and the club which would have that will actually win all right 
so this is what we are going to do and we are going to stream actually live tweets from Twitter and it is actually going to be very interesting because I'm going to show you guys how you can tweet how you can stream tweets from Twitter using R right so and I'm also going to tell you how you can create an application on Twitter right sounds interesting doesn't it all right guys so since most of you are giving me a go let's do it in R so guys this is our code that is there that we'll be executing today so these are the libraries that you have to import so don't worry I'll be providing you guys the code in LMS let me quickly explain it to you what the code actually does and if it's in line with our algorithm that we have set up alright our first step was to actually split our sentences into words but before that we have to clean our sentence as in there should be no punctuation our sentences should be in lowercase there should be no control words and there should be no digits as well because digits they, they don't signify any emotion right they are neither positive neither they are negative so they have to be removed right so whenever sentences come to us we have to filter them so this is what our uh, code is doing so first it will be removing all the punctuations from the sentence alright so don't worry I'll be explaining I'll be actually executing each and every sentence each and every line of code over here so it becomes more clear to you so basically first all the punctuations will be removed alright so g sub is a function from string r so it basically means global substitution alright so you're globally substituting the punctuations this means the punctuations with the null space as in you will substitute the punctuation wherever this punctuation will be you will substitute it with this that is nothing alright and where are you doing it you are doing it in this particular variable so whatever is there in this particular variable if it, there are punctuations in it it will be removed and this will be substituted against them the next line is substituting the control words with the null space alright so it will be substituting the control words with the null space and then we will be substituting the digits so this means the digits we are substituting the digits with the null space again alright once we have executed, once we have removed the digits, the control words and the punctuations, now we'll be converting a sentence to lower cases. So a sentence will be converted to lower cases and then once we are done with that, once the filtering is done, once we have converted our statement or sentence, what we'll be doing is we'll be splitting our statement into words, right, into separate words. So what this line will do is it will split each sentence into words, right, and it will store it in a list but we cannot parse a list so this list will be converted into a vector so that it can be parsed so each sentence each word will actually be in a vector so that it can be accessed easily and then that vector will be matched against the positive words right so these are the positive words guys so these positive words and the negative words again I'll be uploading into your LMS you can download them from there alright so once we have matched our words with the positive words and the negative words what it basically does is the place where that word was exactly found what I mean by that is for example um, my statement has a word say great alright and I match it against the positive words and in positive words say it was on the 37th number right do you guys get me that great was on 37th number in the list of positive words so basically it is not returning to me whether the word is there in the list or not it is basically returning the position of the word in the list right so it will match the words each and every word with the positive words and if there is a match it will return me the position of that particular word in that list alright so once that is done the output will be something like this so whichever word does not match will have a NA in its place that is not applicable and whichever word matches will have a number which is basically signifies the position of that word in that particular list alright for those of you who are not getting it please uh, give me a moment I'll explain it to you so for example let's take a example statement that the food is great alright so this is the example statement now I want to match this with the positive word so let me include the positive and the negative words in my environment alright done that and then let me match my sentence so before that I have to convert my sentence into words so let me do that so basically this will be ex so since our statement is in ex we have substituted ex over here 
once we're done with that we will convert our list into vector done now we will match it against the positive words done now let us see what is the output now as you can see there were three words right there were basically three words in there food is great so food is not there in the positive list is is not there in the positive list but great is there and it is at the position 857 all right so this is the kind of output that we get when we are using the match statement now once you've done that we basically don't want the position right we basically want to know how many good words are there or how many positive words are there in the sentence so for that what we'll be doing is we'll be executing this particular statement all right so what this basically will do is it will basically see at what positions na is not there so let me first show you what it does when we have na if you don't have the not what will it do so basically this command is saying num a store in num whenever there's an na in pause.matches store it in num all right so what this statement will do is whenever there's an na it'll put a true and whenever there's no na they will put a false let me quickly show you what i basically just said and then all right so as you can see na was there so it has put it a true again na was there it has put it a true and 857 was there it has put it a false right but i want that the positive word which is the 857 which is actually great should be a true right if i put a not over here it will basically convert every true into a false and every false into a true are you getting me guys is this statement clear that if i put a not over here it will convert the true into a false and the false into a true let me show you how so if i put a not here right and execute it and then i copy paste it here so as you can see the true here have now been converted into a false and the false has been converted into a true now why did we do this is this we wanted to calculate how many positive words do we have in our sentence right so now what i'll do is i'll simply write sum of num right when i execute that it returns me a one why did i do that is because when i put sum and i put in a, a variable it basically calculates how many trues are there in that sentence all right and when it does that it actually gives out the number of true values so the number of true values here is one right so it returned me a one and in my example or in my statement as you could see there were one positive sentence and hence i got one now it's the same process everything will be same what i'll do is i will do everything same for the negative list of words as well so i'll compare the same statement with the negative list of words and then i will get a number right so say i get a number three so that would basically mean is in this particular statement i had one positive word and three negative words in the end what we'll do is we will subtract the positive number of words with the negative number of words and the resulting number will be the value of our sentence so for example in our particular thing say there were one there's one positive word and then there is three negative words so if i do that my number is minus two right so minus two would basically mean that my sentence is negative because it is lesser than zero and if you think logically it had three negative words and one positive word so it had to be negative right so this is basically the logic that we are implementing here so as you can see i am doing the same for negative matches as well and then i'm putting a score so the score is calculated by the sum of positive matches minus the sum of the negative matches which will actually be stored in score and the score will be returned by this particular function which is score dot sentiment all right so this is what we are doing guys and then the list of positive words and the negative words are to be imported from here all right so um, i'll be putting in the code in your lms what you basically have to do is you have to change the location from here in this particular code you have to change the location of your positive and negative words and once you do that everything else is the same all right now moving ahead i've just explained you how the function works 
Now let's look at these lines, right? All right, guys. So in this line, as you can see, it says B score, score at sentiment. That is, it is calling the function. It is passing the sentences. It is passing the positive words. It is passing the negative words, and then it is passing the progress. All right. So this is what our function was. We wanted sentences, positive words, negative words, and the progress. So it is calling the function over here and whatever value is returned, it is storing it in B score and R score. All right. So what we're doing is whatever we are streaming, we are streaming it in tweet underscore DF for our Barcelona and for our Real Madrid, we are streaming it in tweet two underscore DF. All right. And then we are passing it to score dot sentiment and then we are getting the score of both our teams. And once the score is returned, we will actually be plotting it into a graph. And by looking at the graph, we'll decide which team is doing better. All right, guys. So let me explain you how will you do it with Twitter? How will you stream the Twitter tweets? So before that, uh, let me ask you, do you have any doubts in the logic that we have applied in the code, the sentiment analysis code? Because the logic part is done. We are just going to see how we are going to stream the tweets from Twitter. All right, no doubts. Okay, guys. So since you guys have no doubts, let me go ahead. So this is the code for interacting with Twitter. All right. So first, you have to get the consumer key. You have to get the request URL, the access URL, the authentication URL. All right. So these three things will actually be the same. You can actually copy paste the same things. Doesn't matter. What matters is the consumer key, the consumer secret, the access token the access token secret and then this line has to be executed with all the parameters. Now what basically will happen here is you are interacting with Twitter and you have to first create an application on Twitter. Now how will you do that? You will go on to dev.twitter.com over there you will create an application. So creating an application basically takes one or two minutes. Let me show you what will be the scene. All right, so this you will go to dev.twitter.com. All right, and then you click on my apps. You will click on create new app. You will put in the name of your application, the description. Now website is something uh, that you have to put if you want to post it to something or you can put a placeholder here as in you can put it in any website, google.com or facebook.com, it doesn't matter. Right, just put it in if this you just want it to uh, want it for the demonstration thing. Put in facebook.com or google.com, whatever. Leave this blank as empty. Check this and click on create your Twitter application. So once that is done, uh, you will see your application name and it will be shown over here. Once you click on it, you can go to the key and access tokens and you'll be able to see your consumer key, your consumer secret, owner, and the owner ID your access token, your access token secret and everything. All right, so this is what you'll be copying over here, your consumer key, your consumer secret key, your access token, your access token secret key and everything else is the same. All right, so once you have done that, you will execute this particular command and this command together. And once you do that, it will redirect you to the web browser and it will give you a pin all right, so that pin is to actually authorize your application that is authorizing your R studio to interact with Twitter. All right, so once you enter that pin, you will be connected to the Twitter and you will be authenticated and then you will pass this line and after passing this line, you can actually stream your tweets. So I will be streaming the Barcelona tweets in tweet one and I'll be streaming the Real Madrid tweets in tweet two. So the data that I'll be getting will be in a JSON format, all right? And I only want to access the tweet text. I don't want the other information, whether it was retweeted, how many times it was retweeted and everything. I just want the part wherein I have the tweet that has to be analyzed. So what I'll do is I will convert it into a data frame so that I can pass the data and go to the text column where the actual tweet is, right? And I will pass the text column of that tweet to the score dot sentiment, right? As you can see, tweet underscore df dollar text means the text column under tweet underscore df 
pass it to the score.sentiment function wherein it will apply the sentiment analysis algorithm to it and calculate our particular score. Alright guys, so this is basically our code. Let's execute it. So first let me include all the libraries. Let me clear everything from here. Right, and then let me include the positive and the negative words. Awesome. Now let me run this particular function. Run. Awesome. So there are no errors. That means it's working fine. And then let me connect to my Twitter. So you have to execute these lines first. Right. So let's run them. Now it will authenticate me to a new page where I will have to click on authorize app and copy this pin in my RStudio. So I will be copying the pin here in your console. Alright. So once I paste it here I will hit enter. There will be no errors so that means you have successfully connected. So once that is done I will execute this particular line. Once this particular line is executed, you are set. That means Twitter is working fine. So it says using direct authentication and it gives me the arrow bar again. That means it has executed successfully. All right, so now I can stream tweets. So let me stream tweets uh, for Barcelona. So I'll be streaming 100 tweets, the first 100 tweets and the first 100 tweets for Real Madrid as well. All right, now let me do it for all of them together. Alright, so it has successfully got the tweets and then uh, let me convert them into data frames. Alright, they have been converted. Right, so let's have a look at our Barcelona tweets first. As you can see, these are the tweets guys. Right. So as you can see Diego is GD but in front of the boss Messi no way so it's all right. So guys this is these are the tweets that we have streamed. All right now let's see for Real Madrid as well. So it is tweet two underscore DF dollar text. As you can see, so Cristiano produced a pinpoint cross. We are back on the way at Bonbo. Yellow card for Casemiro. As you can see, we have all these tweets, right? So now what we'll be doing is we'll be executing our function. So we'll be getting our function here. We'll be executing it for B score and R score. Now as you can see it says 100 percent it has completed our score has also completed let me show you the Barca score first all right so it has categorized each tweet like this so the first tweet is neutral second tweet is neutral 19 tweet is negative 25th tweet is positive 28 tweet is positive 37 tweet is positive, 42nd tweet is positive, 43rd tweet is minus 1, 47th is minus 1, 50th is 1, alright. So this is a score guys, alright. Let's do it for our score also, alright. Let's get this real Madrid score. So guys this is the score for real Madrid as you can see. Second tweet is one, sixth tweet is one, ninth tweet is one. So these are all the positive ones. Minus ones, 41st is minus one, 40th tweet is two. This is very positive. And then you have 47th tweet, 49th tweet. Let's look at the 40th tweet, guys. Uh, let's see if it is really positive or not. Five hours to go, Hala Madrid. Oh, this is the 39th tweet. Uh, wait one sec. All right, so first and then this one. So 40th is this one. Yeah. Uh, dramatic winner from a user quarterfinal. 
right and then so this also this all of this have would have been removed in our cleaning so as you can see cleaning is very important because if it didn't clean it wouldn't have been able to parse it but if we had cleaned our statement our sentences and it would have got the text out of it and it calculates that this tweet is actually very positive all right now we've got the scores now let's plot them on a graph to see which team won right so let's get the score for real madrid first all right for so real madrid has a score of 0 to minus of 0.5 so basically our number of tweets for zero or more positive we have some we have like 15 or so positive code so this is basically zero guys and minus one is basically the same as two right but we have a lot of ones in our real madrid score let's check the b score that is the barcelona score so let me take a snapshot of this All right so this is the real madrid score let's get the barca score right now this is the Barca score. Now as you can see guys, this is the real Madrid score. Let me zoom it for you. This is the Barca score and this is the real Madrid score. So as you can see, the neutrals are more for Barca. I mean it is crossed 60, but as you can see, the number of negative quotes are more for your Barca than your uh, let me zoom this as well. Let me take a screenshot of this. This is the Barsha score. All right. And let me get the real Madrid graph again. So as you can see guys, comparing both these graphs, it's actually pretty evident what I'm trying to show you. That in the case of Barsha, you have neutrals as more but as you can see the ones are also in the 20s range that is the positive tweets are in the 20s range but if you compare it with real madrid again the scores are in the 20s range right the minus one is somewhere near three or four right and this score is pretty high this is something near six or seven but my plus one is same as in this plus one is 20 and plus one is 20 here as well this is also kind of similar right so what we can get from this is uh, basically twitter has shown us that they're almost similar guys but if you look at it more closely barsha has more negative tweets all right and so as you can see from the graph guys so barsha has more negative tweets so minus one has around five or seven tweets and minus one here has like three or four tweets all right so that means real madrid one all right so this is something that you can do with sentiment analysis so according to the tweets on twitter Real Madrid is winning as of now. So Real Madrid is actually winning on Twitter. It has less negative tweets. But if you compare it to the positive tweets, so Real Madrid and Barcelona are on the same number. Neutral comments we are not counting in. Otherwise, Barcelona had more neutral comments. But Real Madrid is a winner according to us. So this was our demo, guys. Moving ahead, let's discuss a use case now in sentiment analysis wherein we'll be seeing where sentiment analysis is actually used in the real life world. So it is used to enhance customer experience. All right. Like I said, so our sentiment analysis basically categorizes into three things. It's either positive, it's either negative or it's either neutral. So companies can detect the comments of customers based on sentiment analysis, based on their products or based on the experience of the service that they have provided to their customers and they can rate it according to positive negative and neutral and they can actually improve their service according to this feedback because if you would have noticed there are a lot of times when you are talk to customer service people you are asked to give a feedback later on right and that feedback is actually to improve their own service now if you were to do that on social media you cannot ask the feedback straight away right 
So you have to go through each and every comment that a customer posts on your a particular product so you can enhance the customer experience as and you can increase or you can better your product by actually going through the feedback that you get from customers by applying the sentiment analysis onto it and actually there are a lot of companies in fact most of the companies that are product based companies actually work on feedbacks and are actually using sentiment analysis in one way or the other right so guys this brings us to the end of our session any doubts and any other things that we have discussed so far any doubts guys if you have any problem I have no problems in discussing it again I will discuss it all over again any problems guys all right so Dinesh is saying nice session you're welcome Dinesh Keithy is saying nice session as well thank you Keithy all right so since most of you are giving me a go okay guys so we wrap up the session then okay guys so thank you for attending today's session I hope you learned something new today all the demos that we did today are very important if you don't understand what we have done today I recommend you go through the recording again this recording will be available in your LMS in a few hours right? you can go through it again and see all the concepts that you have learned today any doubts any queries you can contact a support team which is there available for you 24 7 if they cannot solve a query for you I am always there you have my email ID in your LMS ping me anytime and I will be happy to reply to you right so that brings us to the end of today's session guys thank you for attending today's session see you in the next session goodbye I hope you enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more happy learning